G'day and welcome aboard the Sophia SE33 Life. She is a classic day sailor from the Netherlands with a composite hull, a powerful sail plan and loads of comfort. SE stands for speed and elegance and life, well, this is a lifestyle yacht if ever there was one. In fact, I'm really looking forward to seeing if it does what it says on the label. Stay tuned. Every great story has a who, what, where, why, and how. So let's start with the who. In this case, it's Dutch company Safia Yachts that actually has an Australian connection via Santana Yachts. The Hennevunga family built them back in the 1960s and 70s, then moved back to the Netherlands. How times have changed. Safia Yachts is now the number one manufacturer of day sailors in the world. And they've also won multiple European Yacht of the Year awards including for this boat in 2022, who is also Carbon Yachts Australia. That's a family company for Peter Rones from E-Yachts. Peter was so impressed, he didn't just secure the importation rights, he bought this particular boat for his own personal use. Talking about the what, what better place to start than in this huge 10-seater cockpit that's going to be the heart of any true day sailor. Safir have very cleverly created a sun pad aft. So what that means is if you're not into sailing, then you can sit back here out of the way of all the ropes. Just make sure you keep well clear of this traveler. Now, when you're sailing, these pads can come forward and the traveler can move as well. You've got the backstay controls back here, but it is really nice and comfortable. Again, when you're socializing at anchor, sit back here with a drink, look out over the stern, and it's a really lovely place to be and to keep everything as clean as you see it here, there's a large lazarette beneath this pad that will take all your fenders and ropes. Having that sun pad aft has pushed the helm station further forward in the boat. And the skipper is truly spoiled here with some nice backrests and also a really convenient perch on the side deck. Sophia call these gentlemen seats, but I'm sure ladies are also welcome. Being positioned here, the skipper is right in the epicenter of the sail control center. Now, when you're short-handed or even solo sailing, you can control everything. Harken winches have two speed, plus they're reversible. The clutches are close to hand and all the halyard tails go into a locker beneath this seat and also underneath the molding. Where they'd normally go down a companionway stairs, they're still nice and close and will run freely. The SE33 has a German main sheet system where the lines run through the boom, split at the mast and then are led back to your control. So here at the helm, you can control both winches and also the self-tacking headsail. Sitting in what you'd call the mid cockpit of the Safir and the crew are really spoiled for comfort here. Not only do you get nice high backrests, they're also padded and I have really comfortable cushions underneath me as well, although you can remove them when you're racing. The flooring here is called Estec. It's a Dutch product, beautiful sort of honey colored and it's a lot hardier and easier to maintain than normal teak. Looking around, it's notably clean this boat. The lines all run through under moldings and so there's nothing here to get in the way of your feet. At the same time, you can securely sit here, you can brace your feet against the opposite moulding when you're sailing and trimming. That makes it a great place when you finish sailing and want to socialise as well. Grab a cold drink from one of the two fridges, put your cockpit table up. You can actually cover this whole area to protect yourself from the sun and be a really nice place to socialise after a race or a day sail. Further forward, we have a windscreen that will deflect all the breeze and most of the spray that comes aboard. That used to be the job of the forward hand, so they'll be pretty happy to see this. You can add a cabrio top as well that comes further back and it'll just cover the companionway in the event of rain. Also, really good storage in the cockpit. Beneath me, for example, is a lazarette where you can drop a couple of sails. It's got special recesses for your washboards and nice, easy access to your battery switches. 
The windscreen might give a retro look, but don't be fooled. This is very much a high performance sailing machine. You just have to take one look at this rig to confirm it. It rises 14 and a half metres above waterline. And in this case, Peter's gone for the carbon option over the standard alloy rig that Selden offers. It also has rod rigging. The mast is supported by twin spreaders and has a nice wide chain plate base. The foredeck is almost obsessively clean for both looks and functionality. Almost borrows from super yacht thinking in the way they've kept everything recessed. For example, the self-tacking jib track is housed in its own recess. So is the hatch. Even the furlex for the headsail is below deck level. So that keeps your jib foot nice and low and sweeping your deck for efficiency. Further forward, you have a carbon bowsprit. That's standard for boats coming into Australia. Great for flying those Jenicas or your Code Zeros. The wear in this case is pit water and you wouldn't find a better waterway given all the twilight and point score racing that goes on here. There's also lots of bays where you can go for a Sunday sail and maybe a occasional sleepover. That's where this cabin will come into its own. Also fantastic if you're doing maybe a, a regatta series and the crew can bunk down here for the night. There are, um, you know, headroom is okay. There are four berths, although these two would be sort of child length. Quite a decent sized V berth up front though. Um, also has a compact galley, toilet compartment. Again, only sitting headroom, but you know, it would do in a crisis. It's also fully open down here, courtesy of the fact it has carbon reinforcement in the deck, and that means it doesn't need a main bulkhead. Also has some top side windows, just to allow that little bit more light in here. Speaking of construction, all the structural components are glassed in. The hull itself is foam cored and vacuum infused. It may be modern technology, but that is old school values. The test boat is running a Yanmar 15 horsepower diesel swinging a sail drive unit. That is plenty for a lightweight, easily driven hull like this. Servicing access, it is quite compact down here, but you can still get good access to everything you need to check fluid levels, the filter, strainers, and so on. Sophia also offer a Torquedo Pod electric motor. Now that is good for about five and a half knots and will give you a run time of about eight hours, which is plenty for this type of boat. Why a day sailor? And it's a good question because they're becoming something of a rarity these days when a lot of boats are bought at boat shows all for the accommodation that you then rarely use. In this case, it's the other way around. They've created a fantastic sailing boat and then they've worried about the comfort. And I think when you're a purist, that's your right way to do it. So how does she sail? Well, under head saw at the moment, pointing really high. I love the fact that it's got this self tacker. It just makes working up pit water an absolute breeze. And of course, when you need to tack, off you go, there's no adjusting of ropes or anything like that. So when you are in shifty conditions, this is the sort of rig you want. Notable how stiff it is with this deep keel. You, know, you get a little bit of heel and then it just really stiffens up and it feels really secure. Quite comfortable, can sit to leeward. Got a great view of the head saw, but and having these twin wheels of course means, you know, you can choose. Gusting at the moment to about, there's about 12, knots there under this full working sail hardly any heel and we're making about six knots up wind pointing relatively high peter did elect the carbon sails in this case which is not surprising when your company is called carbon yachts australia i think this, the normal sail plan will do a good job but again if you've got the money to spend it is w well worth spending these are the premium elvstrom sails that come straight from the factory so nice as well having all these controls here. So if you need to adjust the mainsail, just push the button. Same with the, the jib tension. Often you could sail this boat on your own. So novice crew comes out, they can just sit here and enjoy, enjoy their time aboard. This is a good time to tack now. Just gonna tack guys. Tacking. Spins around really maneuverable on that keel as well. There we go, settling in straight into the new tack. You've got a lightweight hull with this carbon deck, so it accelerates really well out of the tack as well. Hull weight is around about three tonnes. 
which is on par with an Adams 10, but that's a stripped out racing boat, whereas this one has some luxury built in. It's nice that luxury can still be light. At the same time, with that high ballast ratio, the hull has enough momentum to sort of power through any sort of chop you're gonna get without slowing down. There are three keel options. This boat has the race keel, which is a fully fed lead bulb, draws 2.1 litres. The standard keel is a lead keel, draws about 1.7 litres. And then there's also a shallow draft option that draws 1.4. Really impressive with this Code Zero flying at the moment. 65 square metres of sail. There's about 30 odd in the mainsail as well. So that's a fair bit of sail and at no stage does she feel like rounding up. I've got full control over it. That single rudder's biting deeply. Helm is still nice and light as well. Such an easy boat to sail to with that, that Code Zero. Just roll it out. There's a good gust now and you can just feel it bearing away. So that is no temptation to round up whatsoever. In fact, Peter who sails it a lot said, no one's ever managed to do it. And I really don't want to be the first. I have to admit, the Sophia SE33 Life is my kind of boat. The vibe is chilled, but you'll be absolutely thrilled to sail it. If you're looking at a car equivalent, I would say a Porsche Cabriolet. Pricing starts at $600,000. As you see it here, $760,000. And that can rise to $850,000 if you equip the Torquedo electric engine, autopilot and other equipment. That's not exactly cheap, but you get incredible performance, pristine construction and lots of comfort. And at the end of the day, you can go back to the club and then home for a hot shower and your own bed. I'm Mark Rothfield for Club Marine TV. I'll see you next time.